The Goat House is back with my top 10 NFL rookies after two weeks of football. We'll see who's new to the list, who dropped out. Overall changes every single week as we update these throughout the season. Let's take a look at my top 10 heading into week three. Coming in at number 10, the Tennessee Titans first round tackle JC Latham, who really stepped up in week two at a good outing against the Jets. What really stood out is the smooth movement, the quick feet, and that's where people doubted him most just because he was a bigger body, a power, a more physical blocker. At Alabama, people just kind of wrote him off for some reason in some categories. So he's already kind of proven people wrong. He was one of those first-round picks that most people didn't love. So it's good to see him already getting going, especially because he switched sides uh, in terms of uh, the offensive tackle spot. Went from right to left uh, heading into from college to the NFL. So did a really good job, and we'll see if he can continue that and stay in the top 10. Number 9 is another newcomer here, Andrew Phillips, the corner from Kentucky, now playing with the New York Giants. And he is kind of as advertised. If you watch him at Kentucky, what really stood out about him is him just flying downhill and being physical, tight in coverage, making plays even in the backfield. And that's what he's doing for the Giants right now. And he got his hands on the ball last week as well, so he's good in coverage. But getting downhill, being very active, very physical on tackles, even in the backfield in the pocket. So that's kind of why people were excited about him. Watching him at Kentucky, it feels like he is the same player. And it, and it felt like last year they hit on a rookie corner. Again, last year, Deontay Banks. So... They're looking pretty good in the secondary, and they draft the Newbin this year as well. So they've been building up that secondary right. Drew Phillips makes the list at number nine. Number eight, who remains on the list, Jared Verse had an insane outing against the Lions in week one. Not as good of an outing last week, but still solid. Uh, solid enough to keep him on this list. There were some guys that were really good in week one, not so much in week two. He was good in both weeks. Really stood out in terms of run defense this past week. Well, the Rams really got beat up, so it was kind of it's hard to highlight anybody from that defense, but he's been really solid with that bull rush and just being physical, a physical run defender. Uh, which we kind of figured he was pretty polished at. So the Rams defender remains on the list. He is at eight. Number seven, another first-round pick. This one for the Raiders. Their tight end, Brock Bowers, had pretty consistent so far. Week one and week two, definitely much much better in week two, but productive both weeks. Had a monster game in that upset win against the Ravens. Uh, so he has the production. Perfect world, world get in the end zone maybe, but he has the production. But what stands out the most about him isn't really the stats. It's the mismatch that he is that we already knew about. But that kind of creates more opportunities for the Raiders offense and actually opens things up for a guy like Devonta Adams. And we saw it in action between the duo, Bowers and Adams, in, again, that upset win over the Ravens. So that's awesome to see because teams game planning for the Raiders be like, okay, Devonta Adams, that star player, we know what he does. He's just difficult to stop. Bowers, this new guy over here, he's going to line up here, there, and over there, and, and we have to kind of worry about who we're putting on him because we don't want to create a mismatch. So again, mismatch and opens things up for other players. So the, the impact, the presence that he makes is, is pretty big. So uh, it's good to see Bowers making the list here. Number six, the Houston Texans rookie corner, Kamari Lasseter, who had a standout game against the Chicago Bears, was very much locked down in coverage. He got some good, good receivers over there as well and got his hands on the ball, made a big play there. He actually got his hands on the ball twice, two interceptions. I don't know if the one should have been called back and it had nothing to do with his play either on top of it. So he's playing very good, and we kind of felt like he was a steal. like that. He, he was a gem during training camp preseason, we heard a lot about him. And the only reason he dropped the second round is because he ran a poor 40, which does matter. History shows when it comes to corners, but he is outplaying, uh, obviously, that 40 number and looks looks quite faster than that 40 number as well. Uh, so it's good to see because he was a ball player at Georgia and he's going to be a ball player with him and Derek Stingley for a long time with the Houston Texans. He is number six. And there's so many good rookies. You know, these. Bowers and Lasseter feel like number like top three guys. That's that's you know shows that there's so many good guys here on the rankings this week. Number five, Saints offensive tackle Taliese Fuwaga, rookie from Oregon State, remains on the list. He was on it last week, so good to see. Still hasn't allowed a lot of pressure, so that's awesome. Not a ton of pass, uh, you know, blocking snaps because the Saints are running the ball. They're passing a little bit, and he's doing a good job there. Uh, but a lot of running. And his pass protecting is better than his run blocking right now. So that's actually a little surprising. You think it would be the opposite, even though he's pretty decent at both. But perfect world for him to be, you know, remaining in the top three. Maybe a little better in terms of the run blocking, but he's still a top five rookie right now. So out of all the rookies. So been big time for the Saints. And their offensive line has been 
much better than expected. Maybe this is the biggest reason why. Number four, the Cardinals rookie receiver from the first round, Marvin Harrison Jr. We expect to be on this list, and after a disappointing outing in week one, he was not. But after a monster outing in week two that started right from the get-go, that got them their lead, got the momentum, that's huge. Uh, he makes the list at number four. So, I mean, if he has more performances like that, like how is he not going to be number one if he has puts a little bit more consistency, consistency together because on the resume, you do have week one, but with that monster week two, which holds a little bit more value, obviously. Uh, so he is number four, but it was good to see him kind of kick into gear. Like he probably heard the negativity, the noise from week one, and he really got going. Him and Kyler Murray are already developing a connection, uh, which is awesome. So we'll see if... Uh, Junior ends up uh, climbing the rankings as a lot of us expect him to. Still waiting on those quarterbacks to get up here. The receivers sure are doing it. Number three, Brian Thomas Jr., who you could argue had a better week this week, even though he was number one last week. It's just more of other guys kind of moving ahead of him, so not so much his own fault that he's moving down. But, uh, yeah, I wish he was a little more involved. Some of these other receivers are getting, you know, insane amount of targets, reception, so perfect world. But, well, we talked about it last week. The best thing about him is he seems pro-ready, polished, more pro-ready than expected, running really good routes, could do anything over the, you know along the field, but specializes in that deep threat, had a monster catch down the field as well. So Brian Thomas Jr., the LSU receiver, looking really, really strong so far, pretty consistent outing. So he's a top three rookie still. Number two is going to be Joe Alt, so up a couple of spots for the Chargers rookie offensive tackle uh, after another good outing. Had a good outing against the Raiders in week one. In week two, he dominated the Panthers, and he's doing a good job in pass protection. We saw he had to go against Matt Crosby, like we said, in week one. But uh, what, what is really stand out, the Chargers' best part of their game right now is running the football. That's how they're making their money right now, and Joe Alt is dominating as a run blocker. And you combine the pass protection right now and the run blocking, you get consistency, you get really good play. So not really much of a surprise, was an elite prospect. And he was kind of, it was crazy because he's kind of known as like a upside elite prospect because he barely has been playing the position. He kind of just came out of nowhere the last couple of years at Notre Dame. Not that it was really a surprise coming from there, uh, but he looks damn good for the Chargers right now. He is at number two. And coming in at number one, the Giants rookie receiver from LSU, Malik Neighbors. So another LSU receiver on the list. The Giants get two guys that make the cut. Drew Phillips at number nine, Malik Neighbors at number one. Last week, the Chargers had two guys. McConkey dropped out, but all is now number two. Giants doing looking good right now, but Neighbors did his thing. That was the LSU receiver we saw on tape, and he was all right in week one, so it's kind of good. He's way better in week two, but kind of good. He's got two good games under his belt, not just one, but super explosive, was super active, getting his hands in the ball, making plays, but yeah, after the catch, it's explosive and the athleticism, just insane. Tough to deal with after the catch. Remind me a little bit. He's bigger, obviously, and may, dare I say more explosive, and maybe there's more to his game. But watching him play like that in the NFL, coming on, on those underneath drag routes and go after the catch, remind me a little bit of prime Percy Harvin, the way the Vikings used to use him. Uh, maybe they used to hand him the ball a little more, but uh, that's what I saw. That's kind of the first thing that popped my mind. But Neighbors is bigger, and he's got way more to his game. So and more durable, so that's exciting, so um, yeah, a monster game from him, this is, you know, the Giants at, from week one to week two are like, sometimes it happens with rookies, especially receiver, we saw Justin Jefferson his first year on the LSU receiver, it's like, all of a sudden teams like, okay, let's, he's good enough to be the guy right now, let's just start getting the ball, enough with the rookie, gotta work his way into it stuff, and he was starting right away, but it's, they, they made sure, they made it a point to get him the ball, and that's what they got to do, and I thought that offense played well enough to win that game, they just unfortunately didn't couldn't kick extra points in uh, a field goal at the end, uh, because their kicker got hurt in, in pregame, but, so I thought they were really good, led by Malik Neighbors, so he comes in at number one, uh, two pretty good performances, well one pretty good and one very good performance out of him, so he's at number one, I'm sure he'll be up here all year, uh, let's see if he can hold on to that one spot. Very curious to see. Let's take a look at the rankings, you know, looking back at them. A lot of newcomers on this list. It's only been two games, so you know, 50-50, one game could get you on this list here. Uh, but Neighbors coming in at one. Joe Alt remains on the list at now number two. Brian Thomas Jr. remains on the list at number three. Marvin Harrison Jr., Taliese Fuaga, Kamari Lasseter, Brock Bowers, Jared Verge, Drew Phillips, and J.C. Latham. So, yeah, a lot of newer guys on the list. And just miss uh, Quinion Mitchell. He was playing good and kind of till the, till the end was kind of give up too much of a cushion that could have been the the play calls but was giving up some catches. Uh, Javon Buller looks pretty good for the Packers. Uh, Frazier, a couple offensive linemen for the Steelers, Frazier and Fatanu, and then Worthy 
didn't do as much the second week, but in week one he he uh, had racked up two touchdowns. So kind of still a guy that just missed the cut, but more so the other guys. So uh, there you have it. For the rookie rankings, we uh, we did this last week. We did it this week. We'll be back next week. We have power rankings, so if you're interested in team rankings, we update, update those every week. We have score predictions for every game, picks with some other guys that join me, loads of content. Check all those out. Turn notifications on so you don't miss any of it because we got the most content there is this time of the year, really any time of the year. That's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.